Добрый вечер. Good evening, everybody. I'm very pleased to be in Moscow again, and thanks for coming to my lecture. In fact, I have to start with some mixed emotions that I have regarding the languages tonight, because I have to confess that I, I understand and I speak Russian, but hardly I did any presentation in my career in Russian, so I didn't I didn't risk to do that for the first time in Garage, which is excellent venue for presenting your own institution. But nevertheless, at the end of my talk, feel free to ask me to come up with any questions in Russian, and I'll try to answer them in Russian as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to Vilnius. <laughs> uh, my lecture will consist of two parts, in fact. Um, uh, in the first part, I will tell some basics about the institution that I represent, the Contemporary Art Center of Illness, CAC in short. And the second part, I will focus on some selected projects by Lithuanian artists that were implemented at the CAC or abroad by us during, I would say, like last 10 years period for you to get some idea about contemporary art of Lithuania, and moreover, as you were just invited, I'm also encouraging you to join us all together tomorrow at Trium Gallery. So, uh, for those who never been to Vilnius, um, uh, the CAC, Contemporary Art Center, which you see the image, um, <coughs> it's, a, it's very centrally located in the, in the heart of the old town. Uh, it's uh, probably one of the very few buildings of the modernist uh, architecture. It was built in late 60s, in 1968, to be correct, by designed by Lithuanian prominent architect Edmonas Czekonauskas. And it was built uh, for the purpose of, of showing temple exhibitions. In fact, original name and the purpose of the building was Vilnius Palace of Art Exhibitions. That would sound like Dvoriec Hudožestvenich Vistavak. Since uh, 1992, it was reorganized into Contemporary Art Center, and as you heard during the introduction, I'm a founding director, so I'm doing it all my life, running this institution. Um, I like sometimes to warm up the presentations with this particular image, which is already from 2005, I guess. Uh, it's, uh, as you see, it's a central entrance to, to the CAC. Um, uh, during the exhibition Populism, it was an international project curated by three well-known curators, the Nikolaus Schaffhausen, Lars Banglarsten, and Christina Recupero. And as you know, Populism is always about some sensations, uh, the politics, and so on. And on the left side, uh, you see the project by Danish collective Flex, uh, Superflex. It's a visitor counter. That's that what it says in Lithuanian. And you see 2,027 visitors who entered the show. And on the right side, there is another project. It's You see the queue of the people at the entrance. And that's Roman Ondak, the Slovak artist. So. So it's a performance, it's not a real queue in front of our house. And all those people in the, in the queue, they are paid by us for, for spending their time standing in front. Usually we don't have queues in, in front of our house. But you see, the, the Superflex uh, piece was very smart. Uh, it's not only about like control society or something, because I have a real anecdote with this thing. At that time, I think I was in Paris and I met our culture minister at that time, who was in fact coming from the Populist Party. He was an opera singer, in fact, and I said, uh, hello, have you, have you seen our populism exhibition? It's really important, it's an international big project, and, and, and as for you, for the politicians, it should be very interesting. He says, no, unfortunately, I didn't have time, but I said, you know, it's, uh, again, it's, we, it's a big success. We had something like, I don't know, like 2,000 visitors in, in, in first week. He says, no, no, it's not true. I was just passing by your house, you know, and there were only like 1,000 something. So that's exactly the point, uh, because the politicians, they always demand figures, you know, from the institutions and the attendance and so on. And, and you see those two projects now in front of you with the fake you and, and the visitor counter. Imagine that every museum or every cultural institution would have this kind of counter. 
the entrance. But let's go inside. As you see, that it's not necessarily that uh, super crowded. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in fact, it's a beautiful white cube space. It's ideal for the exhibitions. Uh, it's very nicely proportionate. It's a project by German artist Ulrich Rückrem, who is notorious for making heavy minimalist stone sculptures, but we asked to do him just those drawings, which are repeating basically the, the measures of the walls, like one fourth smaller than the actual wall is. But it, it shows perfectly the, the condition for showing art. And as I said, the Contemporary Center was established in 1992, which means, in fact, we are one of the, we are not only one of the largest venues for contemporary art in the Baltic countries up till today, but, but also one of, I would say, one of the most dynamic, but also, which is even more important, we are one of the pioneering institutions in that field. I mean, it's one of the first institutions which are, were solely devoted for, for showing, presenting contemporary art. Uh, this is the mistake. I mean, uh, I just wanted to show the, again, parts of the architecture, how the building is organized. So we have this kind of small courtyard. Uh, yeah, here you see it better because the previous picture, uh, it just shows the project by Olafur Eliasson, the Icelandic artist, which was done like in the 90s already, was making green lawn. But always this. But but mainly the the the, the old architecture is organized in that way. Uh, it's that we have different different size exhibition rooms around this open courtyard. So you see now it's part of the Japanese show. In the end, you see the Yayoi Kusama, which you can easily recognize. <coughs> and on the ground floor, we have the reading room and the cafeteria, similar like, like here, the garage. And our cafeteria used to be uh, uh, also the place for, f like any other big museum cafeteria, place for meetings and, and also we did some talks because Lithuanians are considered to be kind of shy people like a nation. They're not easy to start talking, to, st to, to invite them to come up with some questions. So it was kind of smart thing that we started talks uh, instead of having them in the big cold exhibition rooms, we started to do them at some point at, at our cafe, which is like cozy place. Uh, and here you see the uh, Dieter Lassage on the left and Simon Rees, in fact, who, who just made a phone call to me before going to Moscow. He said, Kestutis, you know, I got a job in Moscow. So you might see his one of our curators who spent like 10 years in our institution, Simon Rees, and also being responsible for the public talks coming to Moscow to, to be part of the, I think, Moscow Art Fair team. Uh, but soon uh, after like trying it many, maybe one or two years with the uh, CAC Cafe talks, I mean, we realized that they're so popular and because the cafeteria was involved in like providing some drinks, easy snacks, and then we could not fit in, in the room. So we decided that the, the exhibition hall on the first floor, which was functioning until then as a, as a, more as a project room, I mean, f place for one installation or some, some one artist shows, we decided to convert it in more like a library meeting place, also place for talks and until now it's like really very successful project, I would say, always busy. It was designed by three Dutch designers uh, with this kind of regular shaped uh, uh, tables, but also have, we also have books uh, um, which you cannot take away. It's, it's more like a library thing, but also the periodicals, uh, the free Wi-Fi and so on. So it functions like more uh, as a place for, as I said, meetings and, and talks. <coughs> Also, sometimes we do even small exhibitions there, exhibitions like a one book show, or like here you see George W. Bush uh, sculpture by Alison Jackson by a British artist, I mean, which is like casually, like he sits after tired playing Rubik Kubik, you know, and imagine that you see the guy who is just sits with the headphones, does some homework, maybe the student in our reading room, because the reading room is, has this free entrance, free Wi-Fi, that's very nice. And if you just look around, sometimes they don't even notice that this American president sits, sits next, next to him. Uh, for some maybe five years, I mean, we've been also publishing the magazine. It's called the CAC Interview, as you see. And it, uh, it was based on this format of interview and conversations about art with theoreticians, curators, artists, and so on. But we stopped that. Also, we are notorious the, for the project called CAC TV which is, I would say, until today, unique, because that's the poster for the CAC TV with our 
Vilnius TV tower upside down when this CAC TV, the CAC in, in Lithuanian sounds like Shalikina Manocentras, that's why you have those SMC made from the clouds. It was, of course, the experimental format, but that was a real TV. I mean, it was coming, a uh, TV program, it was coming every, every Wednesday, nine o'clock for half an hour, including commercial break. We had to produce the, imagine, one program every week. So it's, it's really demanding. It's a very, I would say, challenging, but also it was fantastic format. You could seduce any artist you want. If you invite, you know, just for the residency or making a project, and you suggest that you, you can use not only you can come up not only with regular exhibition, let's say, format, but also do something for the television. So it was crazy, but it was like we made maybe three seasons, and I'm very proud about this project. Uh, it was, as I said, experimental, but still it was like really enlarging our audience, you know. And I think the, the slogan was that something like of the television that every episode is a pilot and every every show is the last one. It was about making the tele television. And I remember that I, when traveling, and I quite often was asked to tell about the CAC TV project, and I remember I heard the, that PS1 in New York, you know, they, they had their own radio program. So my answer was always, so what, we, we, we do the television, you know, on TV1 channel in Lithuania. Yeah, of course, we are the big institution, as I said. I didn't say any figures, but it's something like 2,000 square meters of the exhibition space. But... Uh, Besides uh, activities that I mentioned with the public talks, of course, we are uh, time by time involved in, in the representation of our country abroad. So this is like a big lorry, the truck leaving to Venice from our central entrance. And in Venice, uh, as you know, Lithuania is one of those countries which the, doesn't have their own pavilion and giardini in the park, so we always have to look for this for the venue to rent it out. Uh, sometimes the projects, they extend the usual, you know, rented premises, like this project by, it's a very nice project by Gediminas and Nomeda Urbanas, the artist duo, who made a, uh, who made a pavilion, which was an um, indoor exhibition, but also the, uh, uh, this, what you see in front of you, it's um, it's a pigeon race that the artists organized because the project title was Villa Lithuania, and in fact, Villa Lithuania, that's, that's the thing which the Lithuanian government, uh, between two world wars, they had their own beautiful building in Rome for, for the embassy purpose, and after the Second World War, I guess the Italian government just gave it to the, to the to Soviet Union. And up till recently, it was still an issue in, in the politics, I mean, about the property, getting it back. But as far as I heard, we, we, we never got it back. So we got some replacement building, maybe, by, by the government. So, so the pigeon race, I mean, the pigeons, they are really, you know, like a symbol of freedom and, and, uh, and peace. <laughs> the artists, they organized the pigeon race from Venice back to Rome, to Villa Lithuania. But I will tell more about the projects later on, as, as soon as I finish the general profile introduction. Uh, talking about Venice, this is, as you can recognize, those who've been to Venice and the Venice Biennale openings, they, they remember that's Giardini, that's the award ceremony. I should mention that Lithuania is participating in Venice since 1999. And I guess out of the 10 participations at the Visual Art Biennale, Biennale, four times we had to go on the stage to get the awards. So that's, <coughs> that's incredible. Uh, a percentage of success, I would say. Uh, we never got like real golden lion, but, but four times almost in a row we got special mention by the jury, so that's also the case. Uh, besides Venice, uh, of course, we have a Lithuanian Institute, which also helping a lot now with the exhibition, which opens tomorrow. But also, as, as we are the big institution, we are quite often approached, we, had, we, we get our own invitations, you know, so we, sometimes we go to the even art fairs, not with the, our, our own booth, but just uh, invited to do in the project part, you know, to, to present art. So this is this is very important artist, Mindaugas Navakas, standing in front of his uh, sculpture at the Freeze Art Fair in London, where the CAC was invited to, to make... Uh, uh, to, to participate in the freeze project part, and the sculpture is made f out of the CAC contemporary center in Vilnius mm, windows, aluminum profile windows, 
which were replaced by the new windows, and then we were wondering what we can do with this material. So Mindaugas Navakas, who is known for this kind of sense of scale, he made this huge monumental sculpture standing in the free stand, and it was called uh, Smash the Windows, Grab the Crystals, with crystals that are hanging just up there, mountain crystals that we used, with obvious reference to the crystal Nacht, probably. Because I forgot to mention that the contemporary center, the building itself, is built in the place of the former Jewish ghetto in, in Vilnius. So, so I guess um, Mendogas Navakas' idea about the, the sculpture that comes from also the, for the location where, where those windows are coming from. Uh, this is Vienna Art Fair. Also, we were once invited to, to take part in there. And it, I took it a bit uh, as a joke going to Ven Vienna because the sculpture uh, which stands in the middle, uh, maybe you recognize the character. That's the Tony Soprano from the famous TV series with the Gandolfini, in fact. That's the moment when he comes, comes out in the morning to fetch up the newspaper or whatever. And because the Vienna Art Fair was at some point, you know, as a commercial enterprise bought by Russians, I thought if we are invited to go to Vienna, why not we just bring, take our Lithuanian soprano, I mean, done by Donata Sienkauskas, by the artist, quite well-known artist, the sculptor in Lithuania. So now soprano, I think he's somewhere at the railway station, I mean, uh, at the, on, the, on the platform one stands, I mean, because it's a big sculpture, and it was since we didn't sell it in Vienna, we are usually we're not about selling, we're an institution, so it came back to Vilnius. CAC also is known as a platform for different other activities. Of course, our main activity is making exhibitions, the, um, exhibition projects and, and related activities, but we also have collaborations, like, for example, like fashion, fashion festival, uh, it's called Fashion Infection, it's a super popular I mean, fashion event in Lithuania. Of course, we do some music events. We do, um, <coughs> Uh, it's chicken, chicks on speed. I mean, this is more like audience. You see, we, we are quite unique in, in the sense that we have very young audience, which is not usual, probably in some other countries with the contemporary art museums or the art centers and, and so on. And we also have collaborations, regular collaborations with the music festivals. So this is from Mouse on Mars. It just was recent, like probably November, playing in, in the main hall in between the exhibitions. And when I said that we are the contemporary art center, I mm, didn't mention uh, two simple, very important things, that we are state supported. I mean, the Ministry of Culture is above us, funded. And we are not the museum. We don't have our own collection. So um, the Fluxus room, which you see the Fluxus cabinet, we call it in Lithuania, Fluxus cabinetas. This is the only exception in, 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 our, in our building because that's the only thing which is permanent. It's, it's a gift. It's a gift under condition from the very well-known uh, uh, and probably one of the biggest Fluxus collections in the world, which used to be in Detroit, where it belonged to um, Jill and Lila Silvermans. And now it went to MoMA, and this is a small part which is, didn't arrive to MoMA that stays in Vilnius because it's after the big ex Fluxus exhibitions that we did in, in mid of 90s, you know, the collectors came to Vilnius and they were so touched by the warm reception because, you know, Fluxus was the movement started by Lithuanian artist George Machunas and they were touched by reception and by the fact that we don't have anything by Machunas and Fluxus movement in, in the country. So that was the first thing which we got as a gift. We also have a nice cinema hall, which functions, you know, for also as an extension of our exhibition program. For example, now, now we have at Vilnius what's, what I left uh, back home. I left two exhibitions. Uh, um, one is uh, LA artist Sharon, Sharon Lockhart, and the other is, is um, artist Uruguayan artist, a New York based artist Alejandro Cesarco. And both are, of course, they showing the exhibitions in the, in the main rooms, in the north and big hall, but, but next to that uh, we, we have the film program, which is also we invite sometimes film curators to present their program and so on. Also, the one thing which I didn't mention, we have a sculpture garden. That's something like outdoor area, which is a uh, rather new thing. I mean, it was designed by the Czekanauskas already in the 60s, but for, for a very long period it was just empty because it wasn't clear who, to whom it belongs, either because formally it's not our territory. Land doesn't belong to us, it is a city, so we're using just occasionally for some performances, events like, like this, like night screenings, you know, 
concerts this Jimmy Tenor, you know, and so on. But but recently we started to just to make a kind of classical sculpture garden there. So this is the last latest arrival. This is the sculpture of, from January. I mean by Fernando Sanchez, the Spanish artist, which was just uh, opened in beginning of January. And what you see, this the Fernando is in the middle. Oh, yeah, you can see him. Um, what you see, I mean, it's this pile of pressed metal. It's in fact um, the project called Guernic Guernica Syndrome. And it used to be a ship which belonged to Spanish dictator Franco, a ship which he used for the yacht, which he used for this kind of protocol meetings, I mean, for his holidays and so on. But because Franco is still very quite a sensitive issue in Spain up till today. I mean, the, the Fernando Sanchez, he, I think he cannot show it basically in, in Spain, this, this work. So we had this agreement that we keep it for one year and then it travels to Chile as far as I remember. I heard some stories, about some rumors from Fernando that Moscow also wanted to have that piece in coming. So for now, you can see that in Vilnius if you come there. And uh, at this point, I stopped the introduction with the CAC. Oh, wow. And I have to tell something about Lithuanian art. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll, I'll go now f maybe faster because I, th I see it's already approaching like eight o'clock and I want to leave some time for the questions and answers. I, I decided to start with this image uh, talking about uh, contemporary Lithuanian art, but in fact, it's a, it's a work by Valdas Ozerinskas, uh, the artist who just passed away, in fact, but uh, but it's a very nice piece which I really love because we did it in 2012, if I'm correct, for the anniversary of the for anniversary of 20 years of the CAC activities. So instead of having some kind of big program of anniversaries or some 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 concerts or whatever, I mean this was something that the project was called Romas Ubertas. And Romas Ubertas is, is the name of the person, the sportsman that you see in, in the picture. And, and he is, in fact, Romas Ubertas was the first Lithuanian uh, uh, champion at the Barcelona Olympics in 1992. And just right after independence, it was the first Olympic Games the Lithuanian took part in it. And imagine this was very, emotional moment for all the Lithuanians to, for the first time, you know, to see after like 50 years break, you know, after being in Soviet Union, to see your own flag coming up, to hear your national anthem and so on. But as it, as it happens, you know, with, the, with anything in your life, you know, those sportsmen, those champions, after 20 years, they, they, they are getting older, they, they're kind of forgotten. And Valda Suzerinska, the artist, he, because of our 20 years anniversary, they invited Roma Stubertas to our main hall, which is the huge space, you saw it in the pictures, it's like 1,000 square meters, to repeat his famous uh, disc throw, you know, and to do the sculpture in, 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 our, in our room. So hardly you can call it sculpture, it was rather, I would say, more like wall drawing, because the, every time it hits with the disc, you have, you, you have a certain drawing. You see there's, there's some journalist. And yeah, and the, of course, both artists and uh, Roma Subartas, they were very happy to get in, to be, to come back, you know, to be in the book, in the, in the, in the, in the exhibition catalog and, and, and so on. So yeah, uh, Valdas Zerinskas, I mean, the other project by him, it's the same artist, I mean, who is, in fact, uh, worked at the CAC also as the architect in the house, taking care about the uh, design of the space, also about some architectural displays, but also he was known as, as um, this is the Black Pillow project, it's also, also was traveling from Vilnius to Latvia to Liverpool Biennale and so on, so you might have seen it in different other environments, it's really huge. As you can see, it's very. It has to do a lot with the architecture, and it was a part of the project called Formalism Failures. You know, so I mean, as an architect, dealing. With and just recently, this was in December. I mean, uh, this what you see. This is the facade of the CAC, and uh, the, the, that's Valda Suzerinskas. We did one year after his two years after his he passed away, and we did his retrospective. So, so this is the facade of the and entrance and some images from his retrospective. As I said, Valdas was very 
very diverse in his activities to start with the architecture, filmmaking, you know, the design of objects, uh, exhibition design and so on. And here you see in our cinema hall, you know, his film program and so on. He became famous w w for his architectural project together with his colleague architects, uh, Odris Buches and, and Gintaras Kuginis for this yellow pavilion which was designed for World Expo exhibition in, in Hanover in year 2000 for, for, for the millennium. So it was a really iconic piece which got among like five best pavilions in, in the world exhibition. So, uh, and he also like redesigned our entrance. So you see this is like a lobby of the CAC. He was always using this kind of unconventional materials going more for, I don't know, for music shops, uh, sports shops to, to get his uh, uh, raw material for making the architecture and design. This is, for example, uh, at his retrospective collection of his own working clothes because that was the way he was dressed. I mean, but you see, according to different colors, he had plenty of those. Some of them, they were just unpacked. So when we found his heritage in, in his wardrobe, I mean, we were amazed how... Uh, yes, this is the artist I also wanted to, to mention, Darius Mikshis. Uh, it's funny to see that after Roma Subortes, you might have this impression that we always have sport games in, uh, at the CAC in Vilnius in, in, in the main hall, but which is not true. I would say that those were only the two cases. Darius Mikshis is, uh, uh, is the artist that you saw already in, in, in this image with the project behind the white curtain, but here he he was at the, at the Gasworks, the... Um, uh, at the artist residency place in London, we had exchange with the Gasworks, uh, CAC, and Triangle in Marseille. Uh, and his project for being in the Gasworks, for spending there, you know, like three months, you know, in the residency, was to learn to play cricket. You know, cricket is not really a very popular game in Lithuania. I guess it's not also in Russia, case. But that was his contribution to the project. He learned to play cricket. But when he came back, he established the first cricket club uh, in Lithuania. And of course, we had to try it out. I mean, so we made this game in, in our main hall. Darius always has some crazy ideas. I mean, some of them, they are completely unrealizable. Like, like for example, he was proposing for the Sydney Biennale, I think he was proposing to establish the ABBA, ABBA Museum at Qantas Air, uh, Airlines, you know, at, at the air, on the airplanes. But this was the project uh, uh, that we once again got on the stage uh, on the, at the award ceremony. We got a special mention by the jury in, in, in Venice. It was called Behind the White Curtain. And his idea was uh, that uh, he wanted to invite, you know, like 300 Lithuanian artists to, to go to Venice, you know, to participate in Venice Biennale in our Lithuanian pavilion. But uh, the way he selected those artists was very simple. I mean, he just asked for the list from the Ministry of Culture for, of every artist who got the state support, uh, so-called stipends for, for like an artist every year, which, which comes like a salary, basically. You have a monthly payment in, in order to, to provide means for artists to live in and to have more freedom to create. And he, uh, those 300 artists, I mean, that we had as institution, as organ organizer for Venice Biennale, we had to approach, of course, uh, they were asked to choose one work, I mean, that they want to be represented in Venice. But the project was called, as you see, Behind the White Curtain. So, in fact, I mean, most of those works, they were not shown, in fact, in Venice because they were, they were kept stored, you know, on the other side of the curtain, and we were only, like showing the works on demand. So there was a big book published, I mean, for, for, the, for, for the whole collection. And every visitor who arrived to the exhibition, uh, to our pavilion, they, they were approached by the, by the you know, people at the front desk. I mean, and you, you could choose your work, which one you see. You could do your own small exhibitions of Lisbon photography, objects, and, and, and so on. So it was a very elegant uh, approach to your own history because, you know, frankly, from those, and also very critical in terms of approach about the state support of, of the visual arts, because I would say if you look at that list of 300 artists, there were quite a few names, I would say, which I'd never heard about, you know. So, so yeah. Here we come to, if we have some older generation people, senior generation people in the audience, they definitely would know this is Donatas Banyonis, a very popular actor in, in the Soviet times, especially in... in but but uh, Damon Tasnarkevich, the next artist that I should mm, talk about, uh, who is also participating in the, in, the, in the exhibition tomorrow that opens, he He's probably one of the best known internationally nowadays artists from, from Lithuania, but this is the project um, I really like by him. It's called Re Solaris Revisited. 
he invited Donatas Bonionescu, who became also who was the main character. I think was Chris Kelvin. That's that's the prototype name at the Solaris of by Tarkovsky, the, the famous film. So he invited Donatas Bonionis after 35 years, you know, to to play again the role of, of Chris Chris Kelvin. Using some surroundings like TV tower or some uh, and so on. So we were showing this project in this open courtyard at the midnight time, at 12 o'clock in the evening. You could come in, in, in the open air and, and to see Donatas Bonionis. And also he was using to illustrate this kind of fantastic environment of the of the Solaris. He was using you know another celebrated Lithuanian artist, Chulonis. Using Chulonis photography from Anapa, from Crimea, from from the year 1905. You know. But Damon is one. He's of course known mainly as a filmmaker, and and beginning of his, of his career, this was iconic piece called Europe, with the coordinates. Because you know, it turns out that according to the French Geography Institute, the center, geographical center of Europe, is something like 20 some kilometers of fulfillment, not far away. And Damon's idea was very simple. He says, "I got up when, one morning and I just want to go to the center of Europe to see how this looked like." And that was done in '97, I guess. And he just filmed basically the whole way and road. I mean, and how that Europe way to the center of Europe looks like. But besides that, of course, ah, oh, okay. Maybe we'll skip some some images which are not enough good. Indra Sherpetita. That's the also artist you will see tomorrow. <coughs> Uh, this is the work um, called uh, Lack of Experience or Absence of Experience in English, uh, the series of the light boxes. Uh, uh, and in fact, the artist, she would, the origin of the work is simple artist. She was curious about the, she wanted to see some images and the cruelty of the ISIS, you know, the Islamic State uh, of mm, beheadings, basically. But at the moment when she was in living somewhere in the province, you know, in the UK, and, and she had she said she had a very slow internet, so whenever she collected the ISIS beheading, she always got these pixels coming up, only the first like abstract things with the colors. So if you see like a victim, you probably have this in the red color or the sand is yellow and the and then so on. So what I liked about this project because um, you know, Indra Petita, she's one of the very few artists, I would say, especially also talking about the younger generation, which has this kind of uh, critical approach towards her own history also with the Soviet heritage, you know, and so on. So she, she was known basically for, for works like, like this, where she, and, and she still continues that series. She, she was asking the like, craftsmen people to produce the replicas of the NKVD or KGB houses for houses of torture after the Second World War during the Lisbon resistance, where the all the um, Lisbon partisans were taken there and then tortured. So she was making those beautiful scale models from the, from the plywood with the old craftsmen producing them and making the photographs, like making the second layer and showing them in the exhibitions like this, you see from the Tate Modern, the, the display of her work. But this project I liked because I mean uh, she she was like departing from the from the Lithuanian thematic from historically doing something more I would say international in in terms of her concerns, but also it was the time when we were showing this project two years ago when we had a strong discussion in Lithuania about the monuments and especially what contemporary monuments could be there. Uh, so I, this I would say it's very. Also abstract, but also very monumental, you know, approach to, towards the idea of what monument could be in nowadays contempt. Uh, Gilnes Kempinas, one more artist from tomorrow exhibition. I mean, of course, I have no time to tell about all the contemporary artists that I would consider very important, I would love to mention, but I will just quickly run through Gilnes Kempinas, who is basically very kind of, I would say, formalist artist, uh, has... Uh, uh, he has the signature pieces are uh, those flying tapes. I mean, the, you see this big fan in, in our North Hall and the tape it just flies around you. So for our, I, I would say, another anniversary exhibition, like 15 years anniversary, we made this huge installation there. Gilnas Landsbergers, I'm just speeding a bit up. Um, Gilnas Landsbergers, is, it's again, I would say more a generation which artists were born already like late 70s, I would guess. Uh, uh, he's 40s now. 
It's one of those big installation artists. You see, it's what heroic sometimes um, gestures as institution we have to do to realize the artist projects. For example, like this, we needed those two big uh, Christmas tree which arrived like in September for the exhibition for the Baltic Triennial. It's one of the biggest, largest projects that we do. I forgot to mention that at CAC we're, we're making something like eight to 15 shows every year. So for the Baltic Triennial, we had to place those two, two big trees in our courtyard and what he built the structure was this H&M or heavy metal, whatever he would say. Uh, this was more like a shelter for the homeless people. You could have some heating in there and to come in the evening. But he started his career, Gilnas Landsberg, as was this uh, kind of, this is made from paper, that, that, that explains a lot. This is a paper model, just a big size, like real size, life size. This is Gilnas Landsberg's exhibition at the CAC, soul exhibition. Uh, that's very nice intervention into our ceiling, opening that and putting the pigeons, the, the li live pigeons, and opening event. And Gilnas Landsberg's again sculptural piece with the with the horns. I mean, because the exhibition was called uh, "Without a Crown" on the crown, crownless. And my favorite piece and approach by Gilnas Landsberg's uh, towards his own art. He made in his own solo exhibition in the main hall, he made a small gallery where he invited the other artists to show their work, you know, younger artists from the generation, basically letting in them to the contemporary center, which is by now, of course, it's established institution, I mean, with international profile and, and, and so on. And that's Jonas Landsberger's who quite re probably recent, most recent piece from Sao Paulo Biennale, which was just closed by. That's Venice. Uh, I was about telling some tendencies, especially with the performance art. Uh, and uh, this is not a performance, it's just a production of, of our production as a CAC of the Lithuanian artist Laura Grabstiene. I think this, the piece was called um, Film for Unknown Artist. And she starts her project with you know, putting the, the plague the plate of a known artist on the Vilnius Art Academy. And then she starts her traveling through the Amsterdam red light district, going to you know to and ending up in the Paris in front of the of course Eiffel Tower. But but before that she we had to pay as an institution for her pole dancing lessons, you see, from the from the Paris Metro. Uh, Agla Budvitita, uh, she's another, I would say, younger generation artist, um, born probably already like late 80s. I love this project. It was called uh, the Skateboard Prayer. Uh, it was like exhibition at the CAC, which is something like changing usual format of exhibition. So in involving something like eight actors, you know, involving some daily simple mundane exercises and choreography and also intervention into the other exhibitions. It's the uh, second title of the show was, I think, The Heart Below Your... I don't remember, I'm sorry, but but anyway, this is the like intervention. I mean the those actors hidden. Um this piece also by Agle Budvitita was shown in Vilnius during the another Baltic Triennial in year two thousand twelve and then was traveling also all some other countries. One of the last artists I was going to talk is is uh, Robert S. Narcus. It's a, it's like a youngest generation, I would say, or born like 80s something already. And he's still in his 30s. Um, exhibition called in, in a German name Traeger. I mean, with the A with the, the umlet, with double dot on the top. And you see those uh, heavy machines, they are uh, operated like radio control. They're like a ghost traveling through the exhibition without the driver, you know, and, and so on. They're having their own choreography. But the exhibition also had, besides being like installation, piece also had a second level mm, where you can take a tablet computer and you could find the, the the second virtual level of the of the artist, what what you can see in the show, what you what is invisible for just simple viewing of that. So Robert is yeah, he's one of those kind of now hype artists, I would say, one of the candidates. Yeah, this is the image what, what you see already. It's simulated image from the exhibition. Uh, I would say one of the most for me also very interesting tendencies that uh, quite 
recently, I would say last decade, I saw the merge, especially of the people from the music world, I mean, like, especially composers. This is the image of Lina Lepelite, but I also would mention, like, Arturas Bumsteiners, you know, and so on, they entering more exhibition space with their own projects and collaborations. So this is the opera Have a Have a Nice Day, I mean, by Lina Lepelite, uh, shown in, at the Contemporary Center. It's a, it's a beautiful piece, I mean, as a, she's fantastic as a composer, doing kind of minimalist pieces, but, but this is basically the supermarket chain in Colton Lesbina Maxima, it's very well known supermarket, and the, those cash uh, register, those the sellers basically, they have their own like mundane conversations about uh, their own life, and, and and here we go, that's another piece by her using the, in, she was inviting the members of kind of It's a folk dance and song ensemble Lietuva, which means Litva. I mean, so this was kind of facet culture in this, during the Soviet Union. This, but those still harp players. I mean, they they come. They were shown here the image from the Tallinn, from Tallinn Art Hall, where we 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 were showing our last Baltic Triennale, which was shown in three venues in Riga, Tallinn, and Vilnius. So this is scary, something scary. I mean, uh, if you look at the makeup, at uh, this kind of artificial view and this kind of very minimalistic one one tonality music, with which it goes. And so, um, unfortunately, I have no time to show some like small video and f to hear the sound. Julianas Urbanas, also the artist from tomorrow. I won't comment that, but it's that's also opera called The Honeymoon. At this point, I stop because I think I already went over one hour limit. But but we hopefully we have some moments to come up with the questions, uh, both about the CAC as institution, as I said, represent, and anything if you are curious if I'm able to answer about the, this way or not. So thank you so much for listening to that, and we can switch to Russian if you prefer.